Eleven months after Election Day left Republican politicians without a leader or the power to make policy, Republican politicians are upset with their leader for making policy. Our fourth story tonight, it gets less confusing, not to mention a lot more funny when you hear the details. You probably don't remember, but in August, Republican Chairman Michael Steele unveiled his Seniors' Bill of Rights. The next month, in the office of House Republican Leader John Boehner, reports Politico, the party's top elected leaders t told Steele to stop making party policy. Politico quoting two unnamed people in the room saying Steele was taken aback his usual position. Of course, policy itself was not the issue. Why start now? But rather, the question was, who makes the policy? Steele responding, says Politico, saying he gets asked around the country where the GOP stands on a range of issues, and he needed some answers. Steele today said he does not do policy, and Republicans on the record said everybody made nice. Anonymously, a top GOP House leadership aide also told Politico that Steele is, quote, on a short leash. And whatever you think of the appropriateness of that phrasing, its accuracy seems in doubt, as the GOP website still has Steele Sr.'s Bill of Rights on full display. The search for a party leader goes on, however. Glenn Beck's leadership, like Steele's, also now taking fire. Beck responding on Friday to criticism from Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, saying, quote, Lindsey Graham hating my guts is probably the highest honor I've ever received. Which sounds about right, actually. Yesterday's Beck enabler, Fixed News, pushed back at Graham, asking him, quote, Are you saying that Glenn Beck is bad for America? I'm not saying he's bad for America. You got the freedom to watch him if you choose. He did a pretty good job on ACORN. What I am saying, he doesn't represent the Republican Party. You can listen to him if you like. I choose not to because, quite frankly, I don't. I don't want to go down the road of thinking our best days are behind us. We need to act decisively. People are genuinely upset with how much money we're spending up here. But at the end of the day, when, when a person says he represents conservatism and that the country is better off with Barack Obama than John McCain, that sort of ends the debate for me as to how much more I'm going to listen. So he has a right to say what he wants to say. In my view, it's not, it's not the kind of uh, political analysis that I buy into. Let's turn now to MSNBC political analyst Richard Wolf, author of, also of a Renegade, The Making of a President, and a senior strategist at Public Strategies. Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Keith. Politico quotes this unnamed associate of Steele saying, the party's leaders in Congress, including the top aides, still have what Politico calls lingering resistance to fully accepting Steele, and uh, the top, uh, another top aide gave that short leash quote. What are we hearing uh, there? Is that uh, at one end possibly a little of the latent racism in the GOP, or is it more the conventional aversion by any Republican to listen to anybody but themselves, ever? Well, uh, look, it's certainly been clumsy politics. Uh, and, you know, today Michael Steele says he doesn't do uh, policy. Tomorrow he'll say he doesn't do politics either. So uh, the poor guy's got no leash. It's not even a short leash. A and to get to the race question, it, you have to understand the party's calculation in putting him there in the first place. It was a simplistic and crude equation they made that to cover themselves against any accusations of racism, and boy, it's not that hard to find them, they needed to have a black figure mm -hmm. going up against an African-American president. And they didn't have many people to choose from with this token gesture, so they had to choose someone who plainly wasn't ready for prime time. All of that's being played out now because it turns out, irony of ironies, they don't even need any cover. They can be as outrageous as they like and portray the president as a witch doctor, and they get on Fox News. So everything's fine. They didn't need the cover of Michael Steele. It's just ironic that for a party that always complained about quotas and affirmative action, they have found themselves with one. Well. They did the same thing with Sarah Palin as the um, alternative to Hillary Clinton, which grows increasingly right. laughable with the passing day. But uh, Because it looks so easy. Yes, They made exactly. it look easy. It's, if it's too easy, as they say, that means it usually is too easy, or it seems mm -hmm. too easy. What is, what is, though, the power dynamic within the GOP? Boehner and the, the Republican leader in the Senate, Mr. McConnell, uh, are they Steele's bosses? If they don't have policy, can they really stop Steele from making stuff up on behalf of the Republican National Committee? Well, they can't really stop him. And, and it's interesting the comparison that some people have drawn with Howard Dean at the DNC. He obviously had a very difficult relationship with Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi. Uh, but there is a world of difference here. And, and the difference here is that uh, this isn't an ideological split in the sense that Dean represented, as he called it, uh, echoing Paul Wellstone, the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party. And he had this whole uh, policy hinterland that Michael Steele doesn't. It, it's not that Michael Steele represents the Republican wing of the Republican Party. 
Party, who represents an African-American Republican's view from Maryland of what politics should be. The reason he goes out there and defends Medicare is because that's where the center ground is. It's the government plan, lo and behold. So, uh, you know, it's not that he represents the wing. He is trying to move the party in a position that it doesn't want to go to. What's the Graham uh, Beck thing about? Because if Republican officials keep claiming that, that somebody else is leading uh, or the leadership mantle does not belong to Beck, um, it does not belong to Limbaugh, it does not belong to Palin, aren't they, since there's, there's nothing to, to hit uh, to replace the vacuum that they again create time and time again here, it, it, don't they really just confirm that Beck and Palin and Limbaugh are virtually the leaders? Well, part of the problem is that they are indeed a headless body, but the other part is that they're afraid that one of these media figures is going to take this party apart and launch their own bid, a third-party bid. And, uh, you know, Glenn Beck uh, is going to be very happy to take Republican establishment criticism because I, uh, I've said this for some time on this show, if there is going to be a demagogic figure leading a third-party run next time around, it's going to be someone like Glenn Beck. So hold on to your hat. I believe there's only the one someone like him. Let's not find out. Richard Wolf of MSNBC, author of Renegade, and also senior strategist at Public Strategies. Again, great thanks, Richard. Thank you, Keith.